is the first in a series of three videos about anemia. Anemia means not having enough red blood cells. In practice, when we say a patient is anemic, we're saying that their haemoglobin concentration, or their hematocrit, is below the normal range. You might hear people talking about MCV, or mean cell volume, to categorise the types of anemia. And we'll come on to that in the third video, which is our clinical approach to anemia. However, first of all, we're going to talk about the causes of anemia and just provide a bit of structure for helping understand the reasons why someone might become anemic. So, if there isn't enough red cells, why is that? Is it because they're dying somehow, or is it because we're not making enough in the first place? Have we got enough ingredients to make our red blood cells? It might be that we don't have enough erythropoietin. Is there a chronic disease present that's causing chronic inflammation and suppressing our production of our blood cells? Perhaps there's a hereditary disease which is stopping the proper production of red blood cells. Is there a problem with the bone marrow, the blood cell factory where red blood cells are made? We're going to take each of these and look at them now. You might have heard people talking about iron deficiency, of B12 or a folate deficiency. Those are the three sort of ingredients um, of red blood cells which people often lack and cause anemia. Let's take each one of those in turn. First of all, iron deficiency anemia. We can only actually absorb a very small amount of iron from our diet. So if we have a little bit of ongoing blood loss, even a small amount, over a period of time, we actually can get anemic quite quickly because we can't really compensate by absorbing extra iron from our diet. Now, in women of childbearing age, we think about periods and heavy periods being the cause of iron deficiency anemia. Outside of that demographic, we need to think about um, bowel cancer um, in older people. If it's a younger patient, we might think about other causes of blood loss from the gut, for example, inflammatory bowel disease. Dietary iron deficiency is actually quite uncommon, even in people who've got um, alternative diets like uh, vegan diets. In fact, the main group of people who do get iron deficiency anemia from not taking enough in is pregnant women, and that's generally actually because they, their iron uh, requirements increase and they can't really compensate for that in their diet. Okay, so let's talk about B12 and folate deficiency. Now both B12 and folate are essential for DNA maturation and both B12 and folate deficiencies can lead to a specific type of anemia called megaloblastic anemia which basically just means that the developing red blood cells are very big. The reason why this happens is that in a developing red blood cell you have the DNA maturation happening in parallel with cytoplasmic development. And in both B12 and folate deficiencies, the DNA maturation is slower, but the cytoplasmic development can happen at the same speed it normally would do. So you get basically a, a lot of cytoplasm produced, which creates a very big cell, and you see those in both the marrow and in the peripheral blood. B12 and folate deficiencies can happen because we're not getting enough in our diets, but there are also some specific things we need to think about particularly in terms of B12 and how it's absorbed in the gut, and we're going to look at this now. A protein called intrinsic factor is released from the gastric parietal cells and it binds onto B12. They're later absorbed together in the ileum. So therefore you can have two kind of problems with absorbing B12. Either you can have a problem with your ileum, for example, if it's inflamed, like you have in Crohn's disease, or maybe there's just, there isn't any ileum there, perhaps it's been chopped out in a previous surgery. The other thing that can go wrong is in the stomach, and actually some people have autoantibodies to either intrinsic factor or the gastric parietal cells themselves. This situation is actually called pernicious anemia, and it's one of those autoimmune diseases that tends to happen with other autoimmune diseases like uh, thyroid disorders. As I said, some people will be folate deficient because of their diet, but some people actually might have increased needs, for example, in pregnancy, and some people who have, a, for example, a cancer and have a high cell turnover. The other thing to think about is that actually some drugs can cause a sort of uh, functional folate deficiency. Things that would be an example of that would be methotrexate, which we use for immunosuppression or chemotherapy. But also common things like antibiotics, such as trimethoprim, 
can also cause folate deficiency and cause a suppression of blood production in some patients. A related problem is erythropoietin deficiency. Erythropoietin, or EPO, is a hormone which tells the bone marrow that it should make red blood cells. If you haven't got enough of it, there simply isn't a signal to tell the bone marrow to make red blood cells and as a result you become anemic. EPO is made in the kidneys, so actually people with kidney disease tend to have problems with low uh, red blood cells or anemia and therefore it's a problem in people with renal failure. These patients actually do really well if you give them a drug which is basically a synthetic EPO. We also said that some patients can have an anemia in the context of a chronic disease. We don't really know what causes this, but there's some thoughts that the ongoing uh, inflammatory response might have an effect on iron metabolism or affect the way that erythropoietin is dealt with in the bone marrow. We don't really understand what's happening. There's not really any tests for it. So it's one of those things we call a diagnosis of exclusion, where we have to look at all the other causes of anemia first before we label someone as having anemia of chronic disease. Okay, so going back to our list of reasons why someone might not be making enough red blood cells, we said that some people will have a hereditary problem with their blood cell making. And what we're talking about here is thalassemia. Thalassemia is an inherited disorder of haemoglobin synthesis. And specifically, it's a problem with the globin chains, which are the main protein part of haemoglobin. You might have heard terms such as alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia, and that's referring to the specific type of globin chain. In adults, haemoglobin is made out of two alpha and two beta units. The most common form of thalassemia is beta thalassemia, so a problem with the beta globin chains. There are actually quite a lot of different mutations which can cause uh, beta thalassemia, but it actually results in the same problem, which has a reduced beta globin chain and then less production of haemoglobin and therefore fewer red cells. Patients with severe disease can compensate by going back to production of fetal haemoglobin which is made out of two alpha and two gamma chains and therefore they avoid the problem of not having enough beta globin chains. Mostly thalassemia is a recessive disease so patients who are heterozygous for the mutation have a milder disease phenotype, and that's called thalassemia minor. In patients who've got homozygous disease, it's very severe, it's life-threatening, that's called thalassemia major. The body tries to compensate for the reduced production of haemoglobin by increasing the amount of red blood cell production all over the place, including in the liver and the spleen, which is where you use to produce your red blood cells when you're a fetus. All of the bones are producing lots and lots of red blood cells as well, or trying to at least. And actually that leads to hypertrophy of some bones, classically in the skull, producing the classic uh, clinical appearances of frontal bossing. Of course, there are loads of different inherited diseases which can cause anemia, but most of those cause cell breakdown, they cause hemolysis. Um, and so things like sickle cell disease and those sorts of things you'll have heard of, we'll talk about in the next video. The next category of problems relate to bone marrow, which is the factory where our red blood cells and all our other blood cells are made. You can probably guess some of the things that would cause problems with the bone marrow. You might have a cancer of the bone marrow, like leukaemia. It could be a cancer from elsewhere, like the lungs, with metastatic deposits in the bones, causing disruption and, and reduced production of all the blood cells. You can also have a marrow that's full of fibrous material, full of scar tissue. Um, and obviously with, with not enough room left for all of the functioning blood cell production. That's called myelofibrosis. In some patients, a lifetime of acquiring little mutations makes the cells look weird and act weird and not really produce very good cells. That's called myelodysplastic syndrome. The other problem which you can have with your marrow is called aplastic anemia. And in aplastic anemia, there's not really much going on in the bone marrow. There's not very many cells and there's not a lot of blood cell production going on. There can be quite a few different causes for this. It can be an infection of the bone marrow, like a viral infection. It can be that you're taking drugs like chemotherapy which suppress the bone marrow. It can be a hereditary disease which has caused it. Those are very rare, but the things that would come under that category would be diamond black fan anemia. 
If you're finding all of this bone marrow stuff confusing, I've got a video that looks at hematological malignancy, myeloma, leukemia, lymphoma, and all those sorts of things, and that might help clear it up for you. Okay, so we've had a really quick overview there of the types of anemia that cause reduced levels of red blood cell production. In the next video, we'll talk about the types of anemia where blood cells are broken down quicker than they should be, also called hemolytic anemias. So in summary, we might not have enough ingredients to make red blood cells. It might we, we don't have enough erythropoietin, which is the signal that tells the bone marrow to make red blood cells. Or it could be that some sort of chronic inflammatory disease going on, which is suppressing the production of red blood cells. It could be that we've got a hereditary disease, which is causing us not to make haemoglobin properly. It could be that we've got a problem with the bone marrow itself, with the factory that makes the red blood cells.